One of the things newer artists struggle with the most is pigment retention. It can be absolutely frustrating to have clients keep coming back with little to no pigment at your touch up. So here are a list of things that are in your control that can seriously affect your pigment retention. Hi, I'm Katie Schofield and I'm a permanent makeup trainer in the UK and North America. And I'm also a business strategist and I help newer artists like you get better results in both your skills and your beauty business. It really helps my channel grow and help more people if you like and subscribe, so please do it now. I'd love to keep in touch with you, so join my free Facebook group, Permanent Excellence, to share your work or to get advice. And my socials are all in the description, so come and say hi. So retention is a two-part issue. We can't see inside our clients and see what their biology is doing. And we also can't force them to stick to our aftercare advice or incorporate ways of prolonging their permanent makeup in their lifestyle. That is all for another video. <laughs> we can only control the part where we implant the pigment. So what things can we be doing in that time to give the pigment the best chance of healing to amazing results? Number one, and probably the most important, is your needle depth. And I'd love to give you a depth that is the correct depth to work, but honestly, there isn't one. Every single person is different. The dermis on a thicker skin will be lower down than that on an elderly client with thin skin, and your depth will have to change accordingly. If your attention is poor, then you may think that you're being too shallow. But if you go too deep, you can cause trauma, which just leads to scabby results that fall off, leaving nothing. The rule of thumb, lots of blood, then you're too deep. If your results are coming back and they're light but warm, then you could be too shallow. Put a glove on your hand, use your machine, and you should be able to feel the needle, but it not pierce your skin. This is a good indicator of how deep you should be working on brows. And on lips and liner, the skin is thinner, so you need to be more careful. Second thing to consider is your pigment choice. If a client just doesn't retain your inorganic pigment, then I'd go for something a bit stronger. Inorganics are quite sheer, so then I'd go for a hybrid or organic if the retention was bad. But you need to take care when you're working with organics if you're not used to them. It's far easier to oversaturate them. You can overdo the result. Make sure your depth is on point before going to organics. Inorganics need much more saturation than organics, so definitely a less is more approach is wise with organic pigments. Thirdly, you should think about your needle technique. Not all techniques are suitable for all skins, and not all needle sizes either. If whip shading traumatizes the skin, it will lead to scabs and you'll most likely lose all your results, so a good knowledge of different movements is essential. If skin is bleeding, I'll often try and up the size of my needle and maybe change to a circle technique to implant as much color with as little trauma as possible. And this is an essential part of permanent makeup, so you can change up your technique when necessary. To learn the different needle techniques and how to do them properly, I made this video here for you to practice along with. Any questions? Let me know in the comments and I'll see you soon.